Welcome to Scoop World Order. The Buckeyes got it done against the Terrapins today. 37-17 was not pretty. I wasn't close. But again, we won. We covered. So you guys have nothing to grumble about. Obviously, the running game needs fixed. Uh, we had another botched, terrible fake punt. It's almost a running joke at this point. But our defense balled out. Josh Proctor played like one of the best players in America. First team All-America type safety. A um, lot of good things today. Marvin Harrison looked excellent. A lot of stuff that needs to get better. The offensive line, Kyle McCord, uh, a lot of things. So we're going to get into all that. We're going to break some of it down. Uh, but first, as always, we appreciate you guys joining us. Um, again, we, uh, you know, I go to these games, you know, so I usually go and then uh, grab some dinner, watch the end of the Bama game, jump on here live uh, with Nevada Bucks. We appreciate you. Uh, we do this a little bit later in the evening uh, for our post show, kind of rewatch the game, digest it. So we have some good stuff to bring to you guys. That being said, I'm going to bring in Captain Positivity, my good friend, Mr. Nevada Buck, the most positive human in the world. Nevada, we won by 20. We covered, uh, you know, beat an undefeated team in the shoe. Why are people grumbly and not happy today? Uh, well, that that <laughs> that's going to require <laughs> years of therapy and other things we're going to talk about there. But, I mean, I, I had the game at 38-21. Ohio State, and I said the game would be close for a half. So from a score perspective and a game perspective, I mean, it really wasn't that far off from the way I thought the game was going to run. I thought Maryland's a good team, preside, you know, a good stern test. Um, that boy, the Ohio State defense just came up with big play after big play, you know, scored that def that defensive score at the, in the first half, and then Ransom had that huge you know, interception, and then the, the fourth down stop and turned the ball over on downs. I mean, it was a story of the defense – but, you know, that's the way it is sometimes. Sometimes the offense picks you up. Sometimes the defense picks you up. And then, no, no, no the special teams never picks you up at Ohio State anymore. So we can't, we, 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 we can't talk about that. But, hey, we knew, we, we knew there was going to be games this year where the defense was going to have to lead the way. And, and the defense led the way. And, you know, uh, all the – Jim, the $2 million man Knowles and oh, fire man. Knowles and Big 12 defense and all those just – horrible takes i just hope those takes have just gone to die and i hope the people that put them up and wrote that stuff are just embarrassed because it's like the defense is so good this year no are they perfect no do they sack them every time is it the 85 bear no but they're a really really good college defense they keep us in every game and and frankly they won us this one and as you said anytime you win by 20 points against an undefeated team in the in, the, in a conference game the horseshoe it's a good day, so uh, nothing's uh, nothing's going to spoil my positivity or my or, or my good mood or my near perfect prediction of the final score. Yeah, I don't know what Jim Knowles does at halftime. I don't know if if you know, like when he goes down to the locker room at halftime because he's up in the press box. I've literally done his exact path. You go down, you get on the golf cart. I don't know if like at halftime he has like a little crock pot that he plugs into the wall up there and he puts his vegan chili with the 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 gazpacho beans and stuff in it all warmed up and then he eats it before the third quarter starts but whatever he does like our second half adjustments are fantastic and again people can say what they want about our defense gimmicky whatever dumb things they want but i'll tell you what man he got josh proctor out there balling right now you know you can say what you're about linebackers tommy eichenberg 13 tackles was it perfect no did we win by 20 yes did we cover yes uh did jt too well get a sack Yes. Then we rotate the crap out of the D-line. That was the, the one thing I noticed in the game is every time I looked up, it was a different combo. You know, I'd say it was probably still 40% Jack JT, but then I looked up and it'd be JT and Caden Curry. Then it'd be Jack and Kenyatta Jackson. Then it'd be uh, Kenyatta and JT. I mean, they were, they were rolling dudes this week um, after that Notre Dame game where somehow our two old guy DNs played the entire game, which again, I've, I, I still can't remember if that's ever happened. And I mean, that's like some some Paul Brown stuff when you have JT and Jack play the entire game, getting double teamed and smashed by those Notre Dame guys all day. Um, but yeah, I thought Mike Loxley came out with a good plan. I love his offense. I think that uh, it, it's really, really, really good, but he's a you know, bonehead game manager, bonehead, uh, dumb plays. You know, I thought one of the plays of the day was at the, at the very last play of the, of the second quarter where they've got, you know, like, I don't know if it's like eight, seven seconds left. Um, they throw the ball in the middle of the field. Guy catches it, gets tackled, and time expires. And they're 
you know, they're, you know, they're, they're in like a 30 yard field goalish range. And, you know, like that gave Ohio State a big shot of momentum right before they ran into the locker room. You could feel it in the stadium. You could feel, you could see the players. Like I said, I was sitting there watching the game. Uh, you saw the players go running off the field all jacked up because that's kind of like missing a field goal right before half. So there's that little momentum swing because, you know, they got the ball in half. So uh, they go down the field, score, uh, go up seven, but they could have been up 10 uh, at a minimum. But um, Nevada, you know, uh, Trey Henderson out today, kind of a, a surprise. You know, they said it was an injury, kind of strange. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I don't see many guys that get declared out uh, go out and then warm up on the field <laughs> when they're declared out. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Uh, there's some guys that'll warm up and then they'll declare them out because they'll say, oh, he can't go. Uh, we're going to work him out and see. That was strange. But, you know, Chip came in, did the best he could. Um, what do you make of this offense at this point? Uh, is it just the Marvin show? Mecca is in a boot right now. Ankles dinged. Uh, he could uh, be very, very questionable for next week. Uh, but what do you make of this offense right now? Well, I think the offense is better when Trey Henderson's in there. I mean, there were a few plays that were blocked up today that actually could have been for something, and there's a difference between Trey and Chip. But, I mean, the bottom line is I had said last week that we were a below-average blocking line and an above-average pass blocking uh, – run blocking line and, and above-average pass blocking line. I'd say we're a very, very good pass blocking line and a very, very below-average run blocking line right now. And that, that's just the reality of who we are. And – you know, people can say all they want, but to me, that falls squarely on Justin Fry. Because you're telling me that Justin Fry, that, that with the guys in the room that he has, the, all the four-star talents, all the, the five-star talent, that he can't put together a cohesive line? I mean, that's on the position coach. Like, 90% of the teams that we play would kill to have any of the guys on our offensive line start for them. And for some reason we went out there and averaged 1.9 yards per carry today. And it's just, you know, it's just not good. I mean, we, that's kind of who we are right now. We're a passing team. We like to pass the ball. We're good at passing the ball. We're best when we're passing the ball. And that's probably what we have to do going forward. Yeah. And, and we didn't have that home run. We didn't have that 60 yarder today. So you look at, you know, uh, chip had 20 touches and his long was eight, you know, and then Maya had a long of 11. So, uh, you know, we had a big sack that took away a bunch of yardage. We gave up three bad sacks. Uh, it could have been four, but Kyle McCord kind of uh, pitched the ball. <laughs> he pitched the ball to, uh, I think it was Chip. Chip missed the block in pass pro. Uh, and as McCord tried to spin away and, and he was about to lose 10 or 12 yards, uh, he flipped the ball to Mayan and Mayan got tackled. So um, that was one where Mayan, Mayan literally, there's, he's got one catch today for minus 16 yards. So that's the exact play I'm thinking of. So on the stat sheet, you can see exactly where it was. Um, you know, I, I, I just think that they're not good at combination blocks. I've been saying it for weeks. Uh, I used to coach the position when we had Corey Lindsley in Norwell, and that's just what we did. We repped combination blocks. We did it versus live bodies. We didn't, you know, we didn't hit sleds and I'm not some expert. I'm not, so, you know, I'm trying to just cover Justin Fry's neck, but we're not, we're not physical at the point. So it's hard to move guys and, and you can see it. And sometimes we're outnumbered in the box, but you know, you just got to get out of the play. If we're outnumbered, throw it to Marvin, throw it to Mecca. I mean, you got guys that are skilled guys. They got to win. You know, they got to help if you're, if you're outnumbered in the box. Got a super chat. We're going to get into these. If you guys have questions about today's game, if you want them answered, guarantee it. Send us a super chat. We appreciate these so much. Uh, help the program out. Help the show out. We know you guys love this content. So those are huge for us. So thank you so much for those. Uh, M. DeLuca, appreciate you, my man. Clat seemed to have confidence assessment of our O-line and the deficiencies. Is he on point? Do our coaches assess it differently or is it player execution or is it day's strategy? Is it fixable? Well, the thing about college football is everything is fixable. Uh, it, you either change the scheme, you change the players, you change the coach. Uh, you got to figure that part out. I, I don't know. We are not a physical outfit. Again, I would, you know, I know what I would focus on if I was running the show. Um, and again, I, I don't want to hear about talent. I don't wanna hear about, oh, you know, we didn't recruit guys or whatever. Dude, in this era, Deion Sanders took over a 1-11 Colorado Buffalo team and, to, and brought 50 guys into the program. So, you know, go, go change your room. If you don't like the room, change it. Go into the portal. Go recruit guys. Go get better players. Like, you have all the resources in the universe here to get better players. If you don't like it, it's on you. 
Um, you, you don't get people like, oh, well, he has to have three recruiting cycles to get his own guy. I was like, no, that's not how life works. Like, in, when you take over a team, those are your players. Go coach them up. When Urban Meyer took over the program in 2012, he didn't get to clean out the whole roster and get a bunch of transfers and whatever. Like, he had the same guys that went six and seven, and he went 12 and 0. You know, and it wasn't uh, some comfy, uh, let's you know, coom, you know, have hug and kumbaya and sing, uh, mar- uh, sing and roast marshmallows. Like that was not what we did in 2012. It was Vietnam every day. Uh, it was very hard. It was excruciating. It was painful for the players, but they stunk. I mean, they lost seven games the year before, so you got to get the deadwood out. You got to get these guys rolling and. Uh, you know, and 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 frankly, if if we weren't moving bodies as an O line, it wasn't acceptable, and and we weren't good in, in eleven. We had some guys that uh, were older guys that didn't play well. We had a, a whole new line basically in twelve, and we had to turn it up. And we every day go out to practice. I tell these guys, I'm like, look, we're gonna be the best combination blocking team in the country. That's what we're gonna do. And you know, and the guys started to believe in it. And this when we, when we did those reps during practice, it wasn't just some walk through easy pace it was like no we were getting after it we were whooping each other and it made us way better you know so when we got to the games like we were we were blocking dudes and and finishing guys and that was the culture we established so i think it can be fixed um but again it starts with justin fry mike salini i mean whatever his name is those guys have to go get after it and i'm not saying that they don't but you know, I, I've been on, I've played on bad offensive lines at Ohio State. I've coached bad offensive lines at Ohio State. I've coached great offensive lines at Ohio State. I've played on great offensive lines at Ohio State. I saw Nick Mangle today. My teammate uh, started with him in 04, 05, uh, you know, went into the Hall of Fame. Uh, so those are the kind of guys I played with. And, and we've got a huge admiration, respect for each other. We played great uh, on that 05 line that was real good. But Nevada, what are your thoughts? I mean, again, we spend more time talking about offensive line and offensive tackle recruiting and all that types of things. But at the end of the day, like those are your players. You got to go coach them. Like, you know, if guys declare and go early, um, poor Avery Henry was in the stadium day. Uh, you know, he got cancer. Harry Miller had to retire. Like there's all these things that can deplete an offensive line group and you have to go uh, re- refill it. Um, but what are your thoughts on the offensive line? Do you think it can be fixed? I absolutely think it can be fixed. And I just, I, I think, like you said, you just got to go out and fix it. I mean, we've, we've talked about hand positioning. We've talked about combination block. We've talked about scheme. We, I mean, there's a bunch of different things. It's not just one thing. It's not just one guy, but it's a recurring problem. We, you know, we do it all the time. You know, when we run up against any, any time that we run up against anybody, when they have more hats than we do, it's an immediate stalemate or loss. And if they have even even as many hats, then we're generally going to get three or four, unless it's a, an, an individual moment of brilliance by Trey, where he breaks it and 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 you know takes it for a big game. So I think I think that we do offense the hardest way possible. I've said that for a while. You know, we practice a lot of innovative things. We tried pulling guys a lot today. We've been doing that a lot this week in practice. Um, I mean, Maryland is not good against the run, and we made them look really good against them. I, I thought we'd feast against them on the other I didn't now I didn't know Trey was going to be out. And you know, you know, with Trey, I think what they were afraid of is is turning a little injury into a into a big injury. And um but you know that it, it, had I known Trey was going to be out, I might have had a, a, a different take on that. But I would have still thought that Chip and mine would have had big games against the Maryland rushing defense that's not good. So I think for us, you know, we just got to take a look in the mirror and go, if, if we're going to be this bad on the ground, then we've either got to change our scheme, we've got to change personnel, or we've just got to change our approach in general in terms of how we're doing it. Because if we just keep doing the same thing, it's not going to work out. Because it's been five, I think we've got a large enough sample size to know what we're good at. And I would submit, even though we had three sacks today, I I think at least two of them were coverage sacks. I I mean, at least one of them for sure was, where, where Kyle was kind of running around and doing some things. But you know, Kyle still has you know, an issue. Kyle likes to come off his primary read really quick. And when he does, he drops his eyes. He's not going to a secondary. Um, we had guys running open today. He was able to hit him, make some nice throws. That's a, a nice stat line. I, and we won the game by 20. But, you know, to me, the, the big elephant in the room is is the rushing attack. And I think Ryan's got to, you know, Ryan's got to have some long conversations. I mean, Justin Fry is his, his best friend. That's why he's got the job. 
That his qualification is I am Ryan Day's best friend. That's why you're the offensive line coach. Well, then be the offensive line coach, Justin. I know you're dreamy, and I know you told your daughter that you're going to point to where we're going to run, and we're going to be able to run it through that hole and all that stuff. But start coaching the kids up, man. You, I cannot believe that other team you can go across the, the country, whether it be service academies or the Purdue's of the world or whatever, and they wouldn't kill to have the offensive lineman in our room. Um, they would die to get any one of these guys, and, and he's got 10, 12 of them. If he doesn't like who he's got in there right now, then shuffle him up. you got some guys in the back that I, I think are some pretty good players. Give them a chance. I mean, you know, we, we, I, we, also, we learned today also that you can rotate guys on the defensive line, and maybe that makes an impact as well because they looked markedly fresher in the fourth quarter than they did against Notre Dame. So, hey, I, I would say the same thing on the offensive line. If you're not happy with what you've got, shuffle it up. Let's give Zen a shot. Let's give Luke a shot. Let's give George a shot. Whatever we're going to do, um, but shuffle them up because the guys that are in there right now, 1.9 yards per carry is not going to get it done. And it, and it was that was that was hard to watch. Yeah, like like it's weird. Like you know, even Enoch, if they put Enoch in a guard, put Matt at center. You know, again, I'd be for whatever. You know, I, I, I was always surprised they didn't put Matt Jones at center just because he's a six year guy. You usually want that to be your leader. Um, but yeah, it, it's a group that isn't performing well, uh, right now. Yeah. We were six inches away against Notre Dame from, you know, really feeling bad, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we got the, got the dub, uh, three for a lot of yards. Uh, we're going to go into the film room and break some stuff down. Another botched fake punt at this point. It's almost like a running joke. How bad our special teams are. Um, I'm not going to crush it because the one thing I will say about our special teams is we do kick the ball out of the end zone, which I've been saying for years. Uh, I don't know what the deal is here. I think Sonny didn't get the call. He didn't know the fake was on. Um, you know, the snap is terrible uh, to Cody. Um, you know, but but I mean, you know, and, and then you, know, you got you got G out here. So, you know, he's your point of attack blocker, which I hate because he's our worst blocker on the whole team. And you got the long snapper push the guy over G's face right into the hole, which is terrible. But Sonny, like Sonny didn't get the call or something, or he didn't know the call or he wasn't coached up well enough. Cause he doesn't, uh, he doesn't block at all. So, you know, we get the bad snap, which makes Cody, you know, hunch down. And then, you know, Sonny's guy just tackles him, you know? And, and I mean, you can see like, you know, if you draw this on a chalkboard or a grease board, you can see this is where it's going to hit, but you know, this is kind of all, this is okay. But you know, if Sonny doesn't get the call and again, this is coaching. This is coaching. Like a guy who's as good as Sonny Styles, who's that dedicated, you know, if he doesn't get it, you didn't go over it enough. Because again, like Urban Meyer said, Urban Meyer had a great saying. There's no such thing as dumb players, just dumb coaches. So again, you know, we keep getting these miscues where these guys don't get the call or they mess up the call or they don't know the call still on. And you know, I mean, yeah, but, is, yeah, but Kirk, look, look at Tommy on the plate. Look at Tommy. What? Tell you're you're telling me Tommy knows there's a fake punt going on on this play. Well, maybe he didn't get the call. I mean, the way these guys are blocking, they know it's on. So you know, I, I, again, like those guys are they're 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 blocking. I mean, I mean the, the putter, what, the putters. I mean, tra- Tommy's tra- Tommy's trailing it like like uh, Cody's gonna be like J C Watt and running the triple option out there from Oklahoma or something like that. Uh, you think Tommy'd be leading him up the hole or doing something? Right? No, no. That- uh, see, I I, I think to- Tommy didn't get the call either because again they they're, they're blocking this Aussie putt like he's gonna catch it and run over here and, yeah, and kick it like exactly. this. So you know, so so he goes this way to kind of draw their eyes over here and then yeah, you know, I don't think Tommy got the call again. This is a clown show. I don't know what's going on here, but like Sonny didn't get the call. Tommy didn't get the call. Cause like Sonny, like Sonny doesn't even engage this guy. Like, he kind of takes a step and then the guy just like glances past him and, and then Sonny starts working downfield. Like he's going to cover the punt. So, you know, and, and like, you know, you think you know if you're doing this correctly, you know, you, you're here and you've got Tommy leading here and you got a seal here. So here, you know, it sounds like Lombardi on the Packer sweep. And then you got Cody up the gut. I mean, cause again, you know, it, it, if if Tommy has the call and he's coming up here to seal whatever, and Cody you know, gets a clean snap, like this has a shot. Because again, I see what they're trying to do, but again, I don't know what the word is. I don't know if it's Reese Peanut Butter Cup or or Spade or whatever they call for a fake punt. 
block punt, which is what Herbert used to call it. But, you know, you have two guys here that don't know that there's a fake. I mean, just look how they're reacting. Like Tommy's literally, he's he's boxed up like this is like he's running over here to to do his kick. Um so I mean, literally, I mean, you can't take the the wind out of the sails. Not only do we get stopped, you know, the first in the first minute of the game, but then we have a, uh, a fake punt. And that, like, I mean, your reaction to that, again, I I know that we come off the top rope with Parker Fleming, but good God, like at some point you have to produce. Um now, I will give Parker credit. We do kick it out of the end zone, which is something I cr- I, I complained about for 10 years that we didn't kick it out of the end zone. We did that little stupid short kick. And I was like, just kick it out of the end zone. The kicker we got now has got a cannon. He kicks it out of the end zone every time. And every time he does that, I applaud, take a swig of beer, and then say, okay, let's go defense. You know, no no well, stress it, on that. It, hey, at least we didn't give up like a 20-plus yard punt return today. Oh, oh no, we, we did that also. So it's like... Um, I'm trying to be you, you we we said in pre-show you said we got to be positive got to be and I was like you know what all right I'll be positive I'll be positive. I was like we kick it out of the end zone I said for years why don't we kick it out of the end zone so at least in one phase we were okay and we didn't miss any field goals either now the rest of it dog water complete dog water like that fake punt was terrible uh the, the punt coverage terrible um but what are your thoughts on that? Again, we just gave him an extension and a raise. And it's like, this is after we blew a fake punt against Michigan, blew a fake punt against Georgia, and then we blew another fake punt. It's like, it's almost as big of a tradition as the Ohio State-Michigan game at this point, is blowing these fake punts. Uh, but what are your thoughts on it? I mean, is it, because you know, clearly there's two guys minimum that didn't get the call. Uh, you see the guys blocking, then you see the you know the the up back at the ball, and two guys are in outer space, Tommy and and Sonny. But what what are your thoughts on on Parker Fleming? I mean, it's just it's embarrassing at this point. I mean, I mean, it it just is, and I feel bad for him. But look, this is life. I mean, that's your job. Your job is you know five or six plays a game when you've got to have some guys that that get it done, and they consistently don't get it done. And like you said, the fact that he got an extension and a raise, uh, I mean, that's really a stunning indictment of, of, of day. I mean, it is. That just that's just bad. You know, especially when you've got a guy like James Laurinaitis, and you're going, man, how do we get James Laurinaitis into the, uh, you know, the recruiting? You know, get him out there on the on the road, and you really have him. You know, where's the spot for him as a full time coach? And you know, people were thinking that you know, th- you know, th- let's get rid of Knowles. And, and I'm like, get rid of Knowles. Like we can't, we, we can't execute a snap. Like, like, I mean, what are we doing? So, uh, yeah, the, the, the special teams, like I said, at this point, there's, I, I feel like it's just piling on. So I don't even know what to say at this point, but, um, I like the call. I did. I like the aggression. I like the call. I think yeah. it showed some confidence in the team. I think it showed kind of Ryan Day's mindset. I think Ryan Day really wanted to get after Maryland. Um, but that, you know, the greatest calls in the world will be doomed by poor execution. And it, it's clear. I mean, Mirko got the, or micro was the guy that's the call. Micro got the call because he was, <laughs> he was shuffling to the left. So he was trying to pull a thing to the left. And, uh, but Tommy clearly didn't. Sonny clearly didn't. And, uh, and I'm not sure what that snap was because that snap was remarkably bad. So yeah, but, but we won. But again, like, when when it's all that bad, it's because you didn't rep it enough. You didn't go over it enough. You didn't execute it enough. Like when when they execute like that, when that's your only job, yeah. You know, when you're the special teams guy, so okay, let's insult. This is going to be the fake punt this week, and that's what it turns into. Good God, I mean, because Ryan, I guarantee Ryan Day in in the pregame was like, guys, if we get it and it's close and and we need it, we're going to fake it. Don't be just be ready for the fake. And sure as can be, it's you know, fourth and short. Uh, Ryan wanted to start fast and, you know, we get stopped, uh, you know, three and out and punt team comes on and Ryan wanted to keep that thing going and God bless. We just shoot ourselves in the foot. It's crazy. Uh, so we're going to go through, um, this is just chronological. This is actually the next play, uh, or it, this is the next series. This is the next play in this little, um, highlight reel. Uh, this is their first touchdown. So, you know, pass pro wise, you know, we, we bring our four guys, Watch JT here. This is you guys all want to play defensive end for a living. He gets tattooed by the guard. I mean, this sucks. This is when your ribs get broke. Um, but we run a little twist up the top. Jack's here. Ty Leak's here. You know, I, I wish Mike Hall would give better effort here. 
Um, he's got a, he's one up, you know, after the guard leaves, and he just kind of, you know, is in La La Land getting pushed. And again, you know, I, I I'm not saying that to dog out my call, but these guys can only cover for so long before you got to go get after the quarterback. And Mike kind of takes his play off. This is disappointing because he's a guy that's got the ability, but you know, you can't let this turd just like wash you down the line uh, while you're jumping around with him. Like that, that'd be a minus minus on the grade sheet. So this is their first touchdown. So again, you look at the time, you know, you're th- two minutes and 20 seconds into the game at home, you receive the ball and you're down seven, nothing. So again, we want to be positive. Gut check time, Nevada. Um, I know that uh, you're watching this game. When they take that early lead at home after we receive the ball, what's your initial reaction? Because to me, I'm like, great. So now we're behind and they get the ball at half. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? My my honest thought, when the game went 10-0, my thought was, I am really glad that this game is in Columbus because we're going to come yes. back and win this game. And if this game was not in Columbus, that we probably wouldn't come back and win this game. So, uh I was I was glad that that's the way that it worked out. And hey, look, you got to go through some adversity. I I if you go back through history, there's no team, no Ohio State team, no, no matter how good they are, you never have a season where you just go through every game and just rock everybody. And every game's easy, and every game's over by halftime. Mm-hmm. And some games you get lucky, some games you come back, some games you don't deserve. But that's look, this was a game we de- we deserved to win. We were better. We ended up winning by three scores. So it's, it's hardly a, a nail biter, but you know, it clearly was a losable game. If not for a, a great defensive effort and some, I mean, it's not every day that you convert a second and 33 also. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think Ohio, I think Ohio state is O forever and ever whenever they face a second and 33, but uh, the fact that we were able to convert that. And then on the same play, Ryan day gets called for running into the official on the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> I mean, what? what in the world was that? I mean, that was, uh, that was really, uh, it was really, I thought the refs really, really had a poor game today. They were, oh, I thought God. Joel Clatt, Joel Clatt had a poor game too. He was calling for a, a targeting penalty early on, 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 uh, Mike Hall on a tackle. And yeah, I, I didn't, I thought Joel, Joel was trying a little hard today. So, um, I think everybody just had a bad day, but, uh, one by 20. So I'm happy. Yeah. I, 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 again, I, I don't hear the commentary. I got to rewatch the game tonight. But um, yeah, I, I, I could imagine he had a day. So this is uh, the next play. And again, I, I like Maryland's scheme. I think they do some really cool stuff. Um, again, I'm not trying to just love Maryland up. But this is a play that I would steal tomorrow if I was around day because I just think that this is just easy money. Um, they run like a triple drag here. And it looks like a blocking formation. Uh, no, no, and- no, no, no. Wait a second. Wait a second. Before you get into this. Yeah. This is offensive. This is called offensive pass interference. Oh this God, is yeah, is. all, all I mean, day. I mean, we're the guy cover actually one. stops. The guy yeah. stops and blocks our guy coming across. Oh yeah, I know. I oh know yeah, exactly. What yeah, like they look set at up this flying like, wedge. Yeah, it, it is. This is a flying V from the Mighty Ducks movie. So watch this. Like, I mean, this is you know, this is absolutely. This is a like the, the ultra pick. Like, like look at this. But I, I think yeah. that they, ban- they, they they bank on. The fact that there's so many bodies that they're going to miss it, and they do, of course, because the officials suck. Um, so, you know, you got your drag here. You got poor Denzel's got the, the – this is like the phalanx. This is like the Spartans coming through. Bam. And, I mean, and he, and he just dusts Denzel. Like, Denzel gets past one, but he doesn't get past two. So then this guy's <laughs> butt naked up the sideline. You know, and, and thank God for Lathan. Lathan – our safety's played the best game I think I've ever seen safety's played at Ohio State. Um but, you know, that puts, this puts Denzel in an, an impossible situation well, trying well, to pass this off with Davison. Can, can, can we talk Lathan Ransom just for a second here? Just he's, ball, man, he's balling today. Oh, my God. Do, do, well, but how much did that guy get dogged last year? Oh, my gosh. Like, that Lathan <sighs> Ransom got dogged so much. And, I, and I'd be like, man, I really think Lathan's a good player. I think Lathan's a good player. Oh, he sucks. He's terrible. He's a, and I'm like, man, I, you know, like, I don't mean to be like trying to defend the, uh, the undefendable, but I thought Lathan Ransom was a pretty good player. And boy, did he have himself a ball game today. And, you know, for the, for both safeties to have picks in a game like today, un- unbelievable. Like you said, I, I, I can't remember a, a bigger game by a, a collection of safeties, that nothing jumps to mind immediately. That's for sure. This was a, they, they play they, they, and look, they against Notre Dame, they are leading tacklers, you know, clearly yeah. they're, they're the heart and soul of the defense right now. And, uh, but boy, did Lathan get abused last year and happy to see him ball out for sure. 
Yeah, I agree. And our defense, thank God for them today because they they bailed us out. Here you go, fourth and one. Uh, play the game. One of the plays of the game is like all the plays of the game were all by the defense. So fourth and one, they run this little cross action. They're running uh, Leah right up the middle. And you, know, you got JT there. You got Proc. Proc's coming in, coming to kill something. Uh, you got Tommy. They stack this up. Again, like this is very hard to defend. There's a reason why you spread it all out. I mean, you got to have a guy. You need a guy to come up and make a play here. And we do. And, and it starts right in the middle right here. I think that's Mike. I can't tell. Uh, eyes are bad. A little older. Uh, no, Ty Hamilton. So Ty Hamilton, again, um, you know, playing nose, shocks the center right off the top right here. Watch this matchup right here. Boom. Right. I mean, backwards, right off the snap backwards plays dead. You know, you got to get a push in the middle. And that this is, this is a double team and, and Ty knocks the center a yard back in the backfield and that kills the whole play. They don't get the double team. They get stopped. The linebackers proc gets in there. Um, I mean, this is fourth and one, man. I mean, they convert that. I know they went up to nothing, but you know, this is this gives us a little bit of life on the on the sideline. Cause like again, when the offense is sputtering, I mean, our defense scored our first touchdown today. They get a stop on fourth and one. Um, playing their playing their guts out right now. Um, your thoughts on that play in Nevada? Because there there's a lot of those plays throughout the game where these guys are just stepping up. Well, JT just made play after big play. And, and, and yeah. what what you're starting to see from him is he's just a big play guy. I mean, he, you know, he might not make the everyday play every time, but when you need a big one, you know, he's the guy knocking down the screen pass. He's the guy making the sack. He's the, you know, he came in on a big fourth down later in the game um, and made a big, big stop where he didn't get the tackle, but he slowed the guy down to the backfield and everybody else kind of cleaned it up. Um He's just he's just a big club guy, and, and, and NFL loves guys like that. They love guys like that, and that's why he'll go high in the NFL draft. It's just he's got he's got that special ability to take it up a notch. He has got that that knack for making the big play, and uh, just did it again today. So thank goodness for him. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I think he's uh, he's starting to turn up. I mean, he's a gangster, man. JT is an absolute gangster guy. He plays hard, man. I mean, there were a couple times I saw him flash to the ball and i was like man he's got some he's got some burst man i mean people don't you know they see him you know he's he's not like doesn't look like miles garrett or anything but i mean he's he can he can get there quick um oh god i hate i hate when i go i go to offense and i gotta break down a sack but we're gonna break down a sack uh josh far gives one up here um line is i mean i mean we're okay here but i i think how josh is setting and again i could be completely off base I think he's expecting a chip here from Mayan or whoever. I think this is Mayan at tailback. Um, is that X? It's Mayan, I think. I can't tell. But, but you know, the way he's setting, I mean, he's so high. I think he's thinking that the back's going to chip him here. So he's giving him a little bit of room. Now, again, I could be completely wrong, and Josh could just be taking a terrible set. But Josh has been pretty good in pass pro this year. But this, is, this isn't this is good. I mean, the hands are soft. Uh, I think he's retreating a little bit too much, especially, you know, when, it, when it's an odd deal – and there's no threat of a, of a twist. I mean, I would just go get on this guy. Just go get on him. I mean, screw it. Why not? Don't give him all that space. And uh, so we're soft here. Um, you know, nobody's open. So Kyle's going to hold it. And then, uh, you know, he gets he gets yanked down. Uh, again, I, I don't think we're physical enough in the middle. What are you saying? Well, the, the, how, he gets horse collared down. It's like, <laughs> how did they miss this one? <laughs> Well, you look at him. These officials he, are terrible. He literally gets you know? inside the back of the thing, and you see his neck yanked down. Go, what's the what's the replay on this? It's great. Well, I, I don't, like, I don't think we don't have the replay like from the the Fox thing. But no, it wasn't a surprise. I mean, these officials have been bad all year, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, but 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 I think that you you know, they got to be more physical and pass. But it'd be interesting to see if he actually needed a chip there, or was expecting a chip there. Oh man, but yeah, our. Our defense, uh, let's really ball. I'm trying to get some some more positive offensive plays, but I don't think we have any until the second half. Um, Maryland's up ten nothing. Nevada, who are your stars of the of the day? Who are your give me your three stars like it's a hockey game? I mean, I know who number one is easily, but uh after Josh Proctor, who's two and three for you? 
Boy, yeah, I mean, I mean, Lathan Ransom. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to give it to a group of guys. I'm going to go Josh Proctor, Lathan Ransom, Mar- Marvin Harrison, and uh, and and the the fake punt team. The fake punt team gets a special thing <laughs> for for not having thrown that ball into the end zone and giving up a touchdown immediately on that play. They only gave him a first down on on the 23 yard line. So, fake punt go. team. Yeah. I like the fake punt team. So here we show zero. This is Proc. Don't know Proc does. Proc sees it. He's looking at the eyes. Jumps it here. I mean, what? I mean, this kid was left for dead. Uh, transferring to the Florida Gators. Doing whatever. And I mean, what a play by this kid. Again, it's ten nothing. You know, I mean, we have no. We're we're literally a cadaver on offense at this point. Um, this is smart by Davison. You know, Davison pulls up here. I mean, he got to clip this guy pretty good, but he just pulls up, barely hits well, the some guys. Falls the down. Ref, the, the ref throws yeah. the flag. Oh, he he! These guys loved throwing flags today, man. These guys were loving yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, look at them. loving it. You know, you know, but like Proc, I mean, you know, there's there's like Ty Leak. I mean, Ty Leak's doing like the fat guy shuffle, I mean, but he could peel back on this guy, but it doesn't do it. Again, it's smart. You know, Proc's touchdown, but um, you know, like I said, like this kid is playing with a different level of energy right now, and it's it's just it's mind blowing. I mean, I don't know if it's Tim Walton becoming the head of the secondary. Um, I don't know what it is. You know, Perry Eliano, Tim, they've got a lot of momentum. Him, Davison, Denzel Burke played fantastic again today. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on. But Proc is, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, if you did a midseason All-American team, there's going to be a lot of people voting for him, especially after watching this game today. Like, how could you not? Um, but your thoughts on uh, on on Proc? Because like I said, we've been big Josh Proctor fans We've he's been in so many nuggets from when we've gotten information from people inside the team. They're like, he's a dog. He's crazy. He he's got this explosive hitting thing. He's got instincts. And then like, you know, last year, Jim Knowles preseason, you know, he could be the best safety in America. And then he gives up one play and he's exiled to Siberia for the rest of the year. Uh, but your thoughts on Proc and, and what he's become. I'm just, I mean, he's the heart and soul of the defense. I mean, he is clearly a defense that's, yeah. you know, you know, driven by the safeties and he's, you know, he's the big dog. I mean, he's the six year senior. He's the guy. I mean, that, I think that they said that was that his first interception or his first touchdown or whatever, whatever it was, it was one of his first today. And, um, I, like I said, I, I, I'm actually shocked given how his year went down last year. Because guys like that always transfer. They always end up balling out somewhere else, but they don't do it here. And the fact that he stuck around, stuck it out after being kind of embarrassed last year, I just couldn't be happier for him. And I, I think he's got a bright future ahead of him in the NFL. I think guys like that can play in the NFL. I mean, he's a he's a playmaker. He's a big hitter. He can cover. Um, he can do a little bit of everything. And um, I think guys like that have a place in the NFL and certainly have a place on the Buckeyes. So JT gets his first sack of the year. Uh, this is a fantastic move. Uh, great pass rush move by JT. It's called the, they don't block me. So I just run straight at the quarterback and I get him. Uh, so again, sometimes with these sacks, it's better to just be lucky than good. Uh, here you got him with Kenyatta. Kenyatta's down here on the bottom. Uh, he gets held right away. I mean, Kenyatta's getting like, look at this. He's getting held so bad. He's like his poor arms flapping up in the air. Cause the guy's got, got him, uh, got the, the arms outside the frame, but you know, you see, you're seeing some push here. You're seeing again, JT. You know, when he gets scooting, man, I mean, he can close. You know, again, like people, they love dogging these guys, but I mean, this was like, you can tell when he's down here, like the relief that he feels to finally get a sack, and now he's got 1.5 on the season. Um, you know, again, however it happens, it happens. Uh, you know, they had a holding call on the play. That was where they actually they got the left tackle for holding Kenyatta. Um, but about it, do you think that we start to see an uptick in pressure just because, you know, we finally got a sack from JT, uh, Jack Story says the goose egg. Uh, you know, I think that for both those guys, it's been like the giant monkey on their back. Um, and they're starting to rotate more guys in. And I saw more Caden Curry than at any other game. I saw more Kenyatta. Um, what's your thoughts and your outlook on the, on the DNs going forward after this Maryland game where we saw – uh, a lot more rotation. Obviously, there's no rotation on Saturday, but a lot more than I, I saw. We saw more rotation today than we did against Youngstown State. But your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we'll see more of that in the future. I think they they they'll it'll dawn on them that they're better when they're fresher. Um, and you know, clearly defensively, 
the fact that we haven't given up a play over 40 yards, and we can keep talking about that because we didn't put the jinx on them today, but this is just a really sound defense. This is a defense that has cut down on big plays. It makes offenses be perfect against them. It makes you know, them string 10, 11, 12 play drives together without a negative play, without a penalty, without a tackle for loss, without a sack, without a, you know, a incompletion or whatever it might be. And when you do that, it makes it really hard to score. Even, you know, they, you know, today they gave up 17 points, you know, one of them on the short field, um, you know, you know, would have liked to have been locked down a little bit more, but, uh, you know, really came up big, really led the team. And, you know, that's the way it's got to be. Like it's, it's complimentary football, man. The offense has got to support the, the defense. The defense has got to support the offense. And uh, at some point, the special teams is going to make a play. But to your point, we did convert our field goals today. And that was, those field goals were important. Because right. without those field without those field goals, um, things are a little little tighter. He put them right down we the middle too. So I was happy with that. I, I thought you were gonna say without those field goals, we don't cover. <laughs> well, that that too, that too. But also, Nevada has has a heart attack there at the end, and we don't need that to happen. <laughs> yeah. So here's Kenyatta again. Uh, again, they do a little stunt here with him and Ty Lake. And this is just a three man rush, but Kenyatta bulls his tackle right into the quarterback's lap. And again, like right here. This is one where these guys are just dying because, you know, he's right there. He's in the grasp. They're ready to get him. And then you know, he, he slips out here. And you know, this kid, this kid played hard. Now he, he threw, you know, some, some bonehead throws uh, that killed the team. Um, but he's not a bad player. He just made some really poor, terrible throws today. I mean, he threw that one to proc. Uh, you know, we had another pick. Yeah, you know, he took a sack, um, you know. Uh, what were your thoughts on McCord's long balls? Because I was in the stadium and I was like, good God. I mean, can you throw the ball? Like, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to not be negative, but it's like, dude, like, throw it. You know, I mean, you got to throw the ball. I'm going to show you what, what I'm talking about. Uh, well, well, was was it was it really, was it, win- the one thing you couldn't tell from the television was, I know it was raining, but was it like really windy or how much was the weather a factor? Because he underthrew two really badly yeah the one I, to I julian mean, I, and the, the one to marvin is, this, this is one i mean i don't know you know where i sit for the game i don't feel no wind i don't feel no rain so i don't know uh, maybe it was yeah. windy but i was sitting there i had the cocoa in hand cold beer and you, i threw in a cheer not, so it was good you're not you're not looking at the flags or anything like that you couldn't no. tell if the wind was i whipping. can't I, I can't see the flags not yeah. where i'm at so but yeah. uh, this is what where it's like a kind of an arm punt you know, and it's like, you know, if he would just rip this thing and let it rip instead of this, you know, I mean, if you throw it like out here where he can run and get it, it's a touchdown, but instead it's, you know, duck and dive and, you know, Marvin, you know, he adjusted a couple that were fantastic, but I mean, that's, you know, that's not big time quarterbacking, you know, it's, it's, it's a good completion because it's a completion, but you want to throw that and let him hit it in stride so he can run. I mean, you got a couple of gazelles out there in a Mecca and Marvin, uh, and, and there's another one later on, but your thoughts on that, on that arm, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know if it's, if it's arm talent, you know, he ripped some throws earlier. He dropped a couple in the bucket, like that one to that second and mega long that he hit to Marvin was one of the prettiest throws and catches you ever see, uh, after the bonehead sack that he took. Um, well, it wasn't a sack. So he, 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 it was actually smart. Instead of the sack, he, he shoveled the ball to chip train and chip, chip lost 16 yards instead, but uh, your thoughts on some of the deep balls? Because again, I, I think that you know we've got guys to get open. You just got to rip the ball. I mean, you know, this is this is the very next play. Again, Marvin uh, is fantastic. But uh, your thoughts on these Nevada? Well, you know, it it is. I, I mean, I think Kyle's got a big enough arm. He's clearly got a strong enough arm. But I, you know, I don't know if it's depth perception or, or whatever it is he's coming off of him. But for, I mean, he threw two really short today. And yeah. that that was uh, unusual because you don't normally see that. But now I, now I love this route concept they ran right here. This was this was nice down the sideline to Marvin, put it right there on the money. I mean, we moved mm-hmm. right down the field on this thing. And uh, I, I loved later on when we had we were we were also uh, you probably don't have it on there, but we were, on the throwback to Cade when we were trying to, near the goal line where we had to settle for the yeah. field goal. We were tra- yeah. th- the referee picked Cade off on that play. If you, if you watch, the referee's the one who slows him down as he's coming across the field. It wasn't Ryan day running across the goal line, like picking off a guy and getting another penalty. It, 
It wasn't that. It was the referee. The referee, <laughs> Kate's coming across the field. The ref backs right into him and knocks him off his thing. And uh, the, so that, the that ref, didn't work the, out. The ref, the ref was in the grassy knoll picking off our delay play. That's the same exact yeah. play. That, that's the play we ran against Notre Dame. Like the, the second last play against Notre Dame, we did that sprint out delay play and it didn't work then. And then so then we, we dusted off and run it again here and didn't work again. Um, but no, here, we'll watch. Uh, you know, again, since I'm big special teams guy. Uh, good protection, um, kind of right down the middle. I guess if you're at Heine Gate in the morning, it's right down the middle. But I mean, this kind of is right against the left upright, so you know. But again, hey, you you know, we can laugh and joke about field goal kicking, but it doesn't matter until it matters, you know. And we know that from last year better than any team in the history of college football because it cost us a national championship essentially by our field goal kicker not being able to hit a 47 yarder. Um, but yeah, but like, I uh, we had a super chat a second ago uh, talking about praising Jim Knowles. Again, I, I don't know where we'd be without this defense playing the way it is. I mean, this defense is playing fantastic football, picking up the offense. Um, again, you need to find who are the energy guys on offense because defense, you got JT, you got Proc. You got guys that are – Denzel is bringing it, Tommy. Uh, offensively, I don't know who it is. I mean, I felt like it was Trey, maybe a little bit of Marvin – um, but I, I, I just don't know. Like when things are going rough, who are the guys that you, you turn to? Um, you know, and again, Marvin had a spectacular day. His numbers were great. Again, guy, the guy that stepped up today was Marvin. I mean, Marvin was the guy that when Emeka got hurt, uh, yeah, I think Marvin ended up with 163 yards, eight receptions, touch, uh, 58 yarder. You know, again, those are the backbreakers. They gave up a 58 yarder, a 44 yarder, 37 yarder to, to, to Julian. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I think that that uh, that play before half was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in coaching. Every week I see dumb stuff in coaching, and the, you know, the Michael Oxley uh, deciding to throw the ball in the middle of the field with like I don't know what was there 12, 12 seconds ago. We're actually going to break that down real quick. This was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life because you're you're down here and you get the ball at half. So. The only thing you can't do, you can take a shot at the end zone because then it's either a touchdown or it's incomplete and you bring, you trot the field goes on. You got 12 seconds left. So everybody get in the end zone, do your thing, whatever. And, you know, and, and, and again, this quarterback made the throw. So again, it's on coaching when you say, hey, uh, Talia, make sure you know that you have 12 seconds. We don't have any timeouts, so we can't stop the clock. They can't get tackled in the middle of the field, so it's end zone or bust. Like I get throwing this ball to the end zone one time, seeing if you can get a, a pass interference for a shorter field goal or, or a potential another uh, another third of the end zone. Can't throw in the middle of the field, so you know he he checks this thing down to the to the who is this the running back? Yeah, to the running back, and I mean the running back is in the middle of the field, and we're. You know, we're, we're, we're in our zones and I mean, there's, there's guys everywhere. Like you're not going to get, you're not going to break all these tackles when they rally to the ball. But you know, this was, I think this was the play of the game. This is a critical play of the game to me because, you know, you're thinking, okay, we're going to be down at halftime. They're going to kick the, the little short field goal, go down 13, 10, then they get the ball back. Um, so, you know, he gets tackled. <laughs> There's four seconds. Yeah, but, yeah, mean, but, yeah, but have you seen Steele? Those lean on him. Steele, Steel, good, Steel, he, he, good. Heads up play. Look at Steele. Yeah, Steele line at Steel. on him one time. Yeah, and then he he does it again. Oh, He's still oh, there. Oh, I can't get up. I can't get up. up. I can't. <laughs> you know, Steele's like I mean, Steele's got him in the Cobra clutch. He's got him in the figure four leg lock down here. This is perfect. Congrats, Steele. That's genius. Jim Knowles, great coaching. Lay on the guy like a big slug. Hit Steele. Now look, 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 like look at these guys. Like look at these guys. Look at these guys run off the field and look at the dejection of the players. Like, look at these. I mean, I mean, Lathan sprinting. I was watching this on the field, sprinting off the field. This is like, this is like the missing a field goal. Basically. It's the same emotion. Our guys all ran to the locker room, all excited, happy. Like, look how dumb they are. I can't believe these guys are actually coaches. I mean, like you wouldn't do that in Madden, let alone in real life football. And these idiot coaches, they do stuff every week where I'm just like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And then it gets topped by some other dumb thing. Um, but your thoughts on that? I thought that was I thought that was a critical swing in the game because instead of going down into the lo- the, the locker room down 13-10, you're tied 10-10. Uh and you know you got to stop them when you when you come out, which they didn't. They scored and made it 17-10, but 17-10 is a much different score than 20-10 because you know once the, that one score you can go down and get that one score. When you got to get two scores, 
little different. Uh, but your thoughts on that play? Well, I mean, just it, you have to listen to the broadcast, though, Kirk. You do yourself a favor and go back listen to the yeah. broadcast because Gus and Joel were just nut riding all over Loxley the entire game, and it was just so bad. It was just it was so painful to listen to them. Just oh, he's the greatest, and he's the best, and he's the best. and he does something that dumb, and it's like oh I God. may have cost may have cost his team the game, may have cost his yes, team the game. Yes, abso- absolutely. And and, and I mean, stuff dude, like that it, it, that is coaching because like you know Steel Chambers didn't just oh. accidentally lay on that guy, no, and Tal- didn't just accidentally throw it to that guy. That's just that's just that's bad coaching in the offense. That's great coaching on the defense, and that might have turned the whole game. Even though they came back and scored, uh, like you said, being down two scores. If you're if you're down two scores in the second half, man, it's tough. Down one oh, score, you feel yeah. like Let, let's just get it back. Let's just get you know. Let's come down. Let's answer and let's do our thing. But uh, yeah, Loxley Loxley had a Loxley moment, and um, that was that was not good. Well, well yeah, and especially the thing you got to remember is like to this point in the game, the only touchdown we've scored has been by Josh Proctor. Our offense is stinking it up, trash uh, the first half, and. You know, they got to go into halftime, uh, get reamed, get adjusted, uh, get some courage, do whatever to, to go find some points. Because, you know, you can't just let the defense do all the scoring for you. You got to go do your part. The defense is playing hard. They're playing well. Again, that, that stop at the end. Again, that was a bonehead play by by Talia. Um, but it's a bonehead call by Michael Oxley. And again, that's coaching. You have to say, look, hey, you either throw it in the end zone you throw it out of bounds. The two things you can't do are complete it short of the end zone or take a sack. The only two things you can't do. Anything else is gravy. Then we'll have a little field goal kicker dude come out, kick it, go up. But again, you have to go over that um, in in practice, in walkthrough, in meetings. Because uh, again, that's just such a bonehead, dumb play uh, by that kid. But again, it, that that's coaching. And so I, I and if you're if they're truly going off on lo- or going on the Loxley train, then they're dumb. So, uh, again, you know, I, I just, I don't know what to say. We get split here. Um, they just run the little counter play. We've been around this a lot. Uh, nobody home again. This is, this is just good scheme, you know, and thank God who's there 41, the guy that showed up all day saves our bacon here. He's the last line of defense. And you know, again, we're starting it off, right. Getting gashed next play. Uh, we get dunked on. Then we get, hey, you know what? What's hard to defend down here in the, in the short red area in Nevada? We say it every single week. What's hard to defend? Everything. No, the Q run. You know <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look at this. All the stuff we all the stuff we do in the red zone gets locked down. But guess what? A little, a little, a little stupid quarterback run right up the gut touchdown. You know, again. Cause I know we have to, we have to get these like these slow quarterbacks that we have, but that is hard to defend. And again, it's a loss and he had a bunch of dumb plays, but in the moment that was a good play. And again, I think that, you know, when you watch some of these guys, you know, Shador and Caleb, Caleb Williams are these guys that can run, uh, it helps. So we're gonna get back to McCord. He comes out dealing, uh, to Mecca. Uh, again, I think that, you know, when we design these little short plays, you know, again, we've got, the two best receivers in the country. So let them eat, let these guys cook. You know, it's not super, super duper hard when you've got better players than everybody else. Um, this is just a little short dig to Mac. You know, again, I think he's best in the slot. Put him right here. Nice, easy throw right in front of Kyle's uh, noggin. And he, and he laces it down the middle. Mech, couple spins. Um, ankle feeling better there. Here, a little play action pass. Another arm punt. I mean, again, like, I just, I don't know what's going on with this kid because, you know, he's got talent, but dude, throw it. I mean, you got to throw this thing. Again, this would be, I mean, this would be a negative grade for the technique. It's a good decision. The play past the pool guard, you know, get a little bit of a, of um, extra protection. P- protection's fantastic here. I mean, lockdown, 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 lockdown. Nice, easy throw. But I mean, it's just like, I don't know if his, like, if his booty hole gets tight or what it is, but. He, you know, he's not throwing the ball. Like, I mean, this is this is almost so bad that, you know, I mean, Julian's got to slide into third base here to to, to catch it. You know, and, and again, like, he's, you know, if he throws it, this is a touch. Easy. So, again, I don't know what's going on with Kyle. Uh, that was an issue all day. Uh, Nevada, do you think it's mechanical? I mean, it's not coaching. You know, obviously you're saying you know, throw it, but 
Do you think it's nerves? Like, I mean, I think it's just nerves. I think that he's just so worried about getting benched or whatever's going on in his head that he's just not ripping it. I mean, he's ripped some throws, but the consistency for these wide open throws is, is it needs improvement, but your thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, clearly it's a something, I mean, it happened on two, but you know, it's, you know, then he drops that second and 33, you know, right in the bucket into, into Marvin on that, on that great play. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I want to draw any particular conclusion on it, but they, it wasn't good. As you said, yeah. those are, those are negatives for him um, on both those plays, but you know, he made enough throws. I, I, I like you were designing enough good running or uh, passing concepts right now. The guys are getting open, and when guys are open, he doesn't miss many of them. You know, I'll say that those. You know, he gets the ball there and he gets the ball on time, and his arm's strong enough. So I'm not sure what it is on those long throws. But, you know, I I, 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 I get to see him overthrow somebody yet this year, though. I've seen him yeah. underthrow a few, but I've never, I, but I haven't seen him under, overthrow anybody. No, I, I totally agree. Here, you, you cheat motion in. This is the kind of stuff I like to do on offense, especially down in the short area. Dude, pitch it to this guy. He runs a 4-4, chip train him. Uh, you don't even have to really block anybody. I mean, you know, Kate kind of seals here, seal here. But, you know, I mean, this corner, as soon as he turns, he's toast because you pitch it to chip. And it's basically, I got to race this guy whose hips are turned this way to the pylon. So you watch this, and I mean, you have no chance. So Matt Jones doesn't block anybody; he doesn't need to. And it's just, you know, it's whoever wants it versus Chip racing into this pylon. And you know, when you got a guy like Chip that can scoot, like, and again, you got a guy like Trey, that's free money. It's like you can't go broke taking a profit. And I love that play. I hate the short side stretch play because it never works. We run it all the time, and I have no clue why. Um, but your thoughts on that? Like, it was nice to see us get down there, cash that thing in right away. Um, we got a little back end look at it here, but I just think you have to get these guys in space and race to the pylon. I get it. It's just such a simple concept, but sometimes it's like we, you know, we're, we're so obsessed with like beating our head against the wall and running up in the a gap. And, you know, we're going to put Caden Curry in there and we're going to put five tight ends in there and we're going to run right in the a gap, right where everybody knows we're going to run it and we get stopped and we wonder why we get stopped. Uh, and then we do something like that. And I'm like, wow, that was easy. And, and again, they left Marvin on the field, put Marvin out there. Just have Marvin stand out there and everyone's going to be scared. You know, they're going to be taking Pepto-Bismo because they, they think they're going to defend Marvin Harrison on a fade route in the short red area and they're going to get dunked on. Um, I'm going to highlight that. But what your thoughts on that, Nevada? Well, I'm going to make a call right now. In, in Nevada, this is Nevada Bucks call. Look, right here. They're going to they're gonna run that. They're, they're going to run that with Chip and Chip's going to throw out of that formation <laughs> he's gonna throw back to marvin he's gonna throw he's gonna throw it went to the, the guy wide open the back of the end zone i'm just telling you chip a yeah. little halfback option kind of a la michael wiley if you guys remember michael wiley used to throw those on those little pitches near the end zone chip will have a touchdown pass this year nevada buck has called it you think well it makes yes. sense yeah. gonna, i mean it was, he was on a quarterback just, nice oh, there. it just it's just a crazy hunch man just a crazy a, hunch a crazy hunch i love it yeah uh here we got we got a little more, a bit more than Noel's difference we did a lot of drop eight today which i like uh so you got caden in here with jt uh i think that's ty leak just you know three man rush and we get pressure i mean again ty leak you know uh big old big old body big old boy in the middle uh splits these guys again this left guard i would cruise you know i mean i'd He's in outer space right now because I mean he's he's supposed to be helping his center. So Tyler like, just runs between the two. Uh the center's like, where's my help? And the left guard's just in outer space. Um Hey! JT spun. I've been waiting for it. JT's got a great spin to watch. Wee! You know, I mean, if 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 we had a if we had another guy rushing to occupy this guard, I mean when JT JT's got the, the nastiest spin move, I think, in Ohio State history. And he's never allowed to use it. And I'm like, why don't we let JT spin? Like, let the guy cook. You know, he cooks this tackle right here. Look at this. That tackle's lost. He never gets to do this. So he spun. You know, so we get all this pressure. And then Leo just, you know, chucks it to our boy High Sox. High Sox uh, Ransom. And again, Lathan and Proc are just balling out of control today. But again, that's all credit to the pass rush. They got them all scrambled and flustered and... Yeah, our boy Lathan Ransom, who some people said was the worst safety to ever play the game, uh, is balling right now. 
Uh, talk a little bit about Ransom. We talked a lot about Proc at the beginning of the show, but Latham might have been the second best guy on the field today because he kept showing up every time I looked up. And, you know, when we get one of those picks, man, it takes all the air out of the balloon on Maryland's sideline, and it it just electrifies our sideline, our stadium. Uh, again, like, you know, I know you hate noon games. I love noon games, but it, it was a dull, drab atmosphere until um, Josh Proctor scored that touchdown, and then the, the, the shoe about fell down because it was so loud. Um, but your thoughts on what Lathan's done so far, um, uh, particularly today? I've just been, I mean, just been terrifically responsible, just doing a lot of the little things. And, you know, you, you, the, the way you don't give up big plays is, is responsible safety plays, the safeties that can cover, the safeties that can, you know, make big plays defensively, that can support the run. And uh, Lathan's been doing it all year, just did it again today. And, you know, huge sack, huge effort play by JTT on that. You know, you see him flush out of the, the pocket. The other two defensive linemen kind of let him go, and JT doesn't stop. JT's still running on him, and Talia puts it up there, and Lathan high points it and brings it back, and huge, huge momentum swing right there. So, yep, kudos to Knowles, kudos to Ransom, kudos to the whole D. Great job. Totally agree. Um, here, we're running the hide play. We love this hide play where you hide the tight end. Uh, it's Cade. You know, he acts like he's blocking, kind of turns sideways, low hat the whole way. Uh, the first three steps doesn't look like he's running a route. He just kind of, you know, he's kind of hunched down in here, bundled down in here, and then he just kind of floats over here wide open. Because, again, these guys lose, you know, once you're, like, kind of in the blocking formation, you kind of just literally uh, float on out, and he floats. There he is. Um Nice play by him. He showed up a couple times. He had that one. Obviously, he had the huge, huge touchdown to kind of ice the game down. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting that we're featuring him with that. You know, here we kick the field goal, so we're up uh, twenty seventeen. Ball back. Here's okay. Here's here's the dime piece right here. This is after the uh, the loss of like sixteen. Um, you know where where Chip Chip blows the protection. Uh, and it's where I love that Kyle, Kyle shovels him the ball when he blows the protection. And so Chip's the one that loses 16 yards, but it still comes off Kyle's passing uh, stats. So it still kind of stings him. But this is the throw of Kyle's career, I think, other than the Emeka Notre Dame goal line one, but drops it in the bucket. This is second and 33, folks. So you call it. Get your play sheet out for the second and 33 section. Um, and he drops this right in the bucket for Marvin. Again, you know, Marvin might be the only guy in the universe that can make this catch right here. Somehow keeps his feet in bounds, even though he's tracking the ball over his shoulder in the bucket. I mean, that's, you know, that's a dime, you know? And again, I, you know, I, 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 I just, I don't know. I don't have superlatives for that, but I mean, that was one of the most amazing catches I think I've seen in the shoe because there's no room to spare. He's literally, you know, right on the sideline as it he falls into the basket and uh, gets his feet in and, Another huge play. I mean, it converts basically an unconvertible situation. But your thoughts on that throw, Nevada? Well, just uh, well, he, he threw it as Joel Klatt was saying. The only thing Kyle can't do is try to pick all this up. He can't do it. That'd be a huge mistake. And then he goes for a 37-yard completion down the sideline. And then, uh, and then Coach Day gets the interfering with the sideline official 15-yard <laughs> penalty. <laughs> so... So yeah, so that's uh, yeah, oh, it was great. God. Good times, man. Official. So here we do. Uh, you know, we're we're pairing. You know, we ran this orbit motion with a mecca. I think a mecca's out of the game at this point. Um, so we did it with Julian. Uh, we yeah, you know, we handed this off earlier. Um, and here we do the play fake off of it. So you've got, you know, Cade. Cade does the I'm lost. I'm the old man lost at Walmart routine, where he just kind of goes up here real slow and. What's he doing? And then, oh, I'm open. Wide open. Uh, you know, Maryland just forgot about him because Mike Loxley is such a great coach. Cade uh, is jacked. He's ready to go uh, soak corn in the field or whatever he's going to do tonight. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought that you know, that was kind of where uh, the game got iced down. I mean, it was we weren't quite to cover City, but we were well on the way. It was uh, 26-17. You know, at that point, it was kind of over. But, uh Nevada, you know, we got out of there with a win. Uh, Emeka's ankle, notwithstanding, you know, he was he was weight bearing, which was good. I mean, he was walking around on it after the game in a boot. Um, but your thoughts as we as we wrap this game up, because I I just think that you know a lot to clean up. But it's so it's a twenty point win versus an undefeated undefeated team. So 
I'm happy. I like winning. Like, I mean, Texas Longhorns today lost. You know, my boy Quinn Ewers lost. So those guys were ahead of us. So guess what? We're going to move up in the polls. Great. Awesome. You know, again, at the end of the day, in college football, all that matters is you just won every game by one point. We won by 20 today. We covered. So I don't know why anybody's miserable. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff we can fix. But, yeah, this is uh, kind of the beautiful thing about uh, a team is it's never stagnant. It's going to keep getting better. It's going to evolve. Um, but your thoughts on where the team is? Uh, as we head into crappy West Lafayette, um, the most uh, terrible stadium in the entire universe for a noon game next week versus the Purdue Boilermakers. Well, just got to play better and got to watch out for, you know, be on, you know, upset watch for next week. But as you said, it's just, you know, win, survive, advance, improve. And I mean, we do all those things today. I mean, I think the defense took another step, and that's for sure. The defense showed that it can win a game for us, and the offense has got plenty to work on. So, um, yeah, I'm happy on to Purdue and uh, good good win. And hopefully Emeka's, uh, hopefully Emeka's ankle isn't something that becomes – problem for this year let's uh, keep our fingers crossed yeah i mean you know the the big thing about this game with purdue it's a noon game sleepy we lost there in 09 we lost there in 04 09 was a, a noon game where we just stunk uh you know urban had the famous loss out there um in 18 with haskins but you know they're they're a weird, purdue's a weird team they've played us hard in the past i don't know how good they are i don't think there's anywhere near as good as we are but the thing you have to fight is the looming Penn State game because all the people are going to start talking about now is, oh boy, that Penn State game is going to be you know two top three, four, five ish teams, uh, depending on you know how how everything shakes out next week. And you know you you can't let that game creep into this week because that's just kind of natural because it's the big home game, it's the uh, the one everyone's coming in for. It's going to be big noon kickoff. It's going to be college game day. It's going to be all that. Um, so it's going to be real interesting to see how Ryan can get these guys cranked up. So, well, we are going to wrap this show up as always. We appreciate you guys so much for being a part of this. Uh, it's a great post game show. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in with us. Great questions all day. Thank you to all our regulars who are in here. If you guys want the best Ohio State coverage in all the land, join BuckeyeScoop.com. About to jump on there. Our game thread was absolutely crazy today. People were high, low, and everything in between. So it's always fun to reread the craziness that is our game thread. A lot of post-game analysis coming tonight and tomorrow from myself, Nevada, Buck Bill Green. So jump on there. Give us your opinions. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk some football. Uh, we're going to have game threads uh, going for the night games. And uh, just a good little companion for your NFL Sunday as well. So appreciate you guys so much. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also click that little alert bell. Thank you again to all of you guys that are on here for each and every show. We appreciate you guys so much, especially uh, all my people from Ohio, Florida, Texas, California. Shout out where you guys are watching from. Give me your MVPs. Put that in the comments. I don't know who you thought bought out and who needs to get better. I'd like to hear the good and the bad from all of you. So thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop Family. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. We'll have a nice early show for you guys uh, to talk some ball. Go Bucks.